All right, hello class. This is chapter two, section two, where we're going to talk about adding integers. What is an integer? Anyone know? Jake? It is a number above or below zero. Above or below zero. Well, wait a minute. One half is above, or negative one half is below. Maddie? It has to be a whole number. Whole numbers. Okay, think about a number line when you think of integers. They are the numbers that you typically highlight on a number line. They are the whole numbers and their, what else, Maddie, did you leave off of that? And their negatives. Integers can also be negative whole numbers. Okay, so it's above zero, below zero, Jake is correct because he mentioned below, and Maddie is correct because it's the whole numbers. Be careful. It's not the fractions. Those are not integers. Those are called rational numbers. All right. So when we think about adding integers with the same sign, here's what you're going to do. You're going to really add their absolute value. Well, let's think about that for a minute. If they're both positive, then no big deal. We're just going to add the numbers like we're used to doing. If they're both negative, then we're going to add them, but keep the negative. So let me show you in example one what I'm talking about. Negative three plus negative four. What is three plus four? Seven, but we're going to keep the negative. Again, if you think about money, I owe somebody three dollars. Uh-oh, I had to borrow four more dollars. I am negative, or I owe them seven dollars. So you're going to add the numbers but keep the negative. So that's when we're adding integers with the same sign. Now what happens when we add integers with different signs? Here's what it says. Subtract their absolute value and then I always have a bad habit of saying keep the sign of the larger number but that's really incorrect. You're keeping the sign of the larger absolute value. All right, so look, let's look at what we're talking about when they have different signs. Here we have negative five and a positive four. So going back to what I just said, you're gonna always subtract them. Five minus four is one, but the final answer is one and you keep the sign of the larger absolute value or the number that's farthest away from zero. So our final answer is a negative one. So the thought process is to subtract and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. And I'll usually say the larger number just to help you think about which one's farther from zero. All right, so a positive six plus a negative two, I'm gonna subtract six minus two, which is four. And I'm gonna keep the sign of which one, class? Six. six. and six is? Positive. positive. So my answer is a positive four. Do not write a plus four. That's what we did last night just to work on uh, understanding when it's above or below the zero. Okay. I'm gonna work a few of these with you just to get you started, then I'm going to leave the rest for you to do um, on your own. So number one, we have uh, opposite signs, <clears throat> so that means I'm going to subtract, and 6 minus 3 is 3, and I keep the sign of the 6, so it's positive 3. Here I have negative 4 plus a negative 4, so they're the same sign, so I add them, 4 plus 4 is 8, but I keep the negative sign because it was the same sign. Opposite signs, I subtract. Six from 13 is seven. The 13 is a larger absolute value, so I keep the sign of the negative 13. Do you see how that goes? Same sign, both negative. So I will add them and keep the sign negative. So that gives us negative 20. Same sign, so it's gonna be negative 19 plus 11 gives us 30, so it's a negative 30. <clears throat> Opposite signs, so I'm going to subtract, and <clears throat> 14 minus 12 is 2. Now, which sign do I keep? The 14 is a greater absolute value than 12, and it's positive, so I keep the positive 2. 
opposite signs. I might even take a second and get my highlighter and go through opposite signs, opposite signs, opposite, same sign, same sign, opposite sign, opposite sign, and help myself to pay attention. Pay attention when they're opposite signs, you subtract. So like number 19, I'm going to be subtracting. Um, 18 minus 7 is 11, and I keep the sign of the larger absolute value. The number that's farthest from 0 is 18, so I keep that sign. I changed over to green because, again, I want you to keep remembering that green money. If we're talking about money, something costs $33. It's, I'm going to be negative $33. I have $19 that I can go ahead and pay. So 33 minus the $19 that I paid leaves me with $14 that I owe. So if you had a credit card, you'll get a credit card bill saying you owe $14. You're negative $14. Or if this was your bank account, you overdrew $14. Again, negative and positive, so I'm going to subtract. That's 15 minus 4 is 11. Keep the sign of your bigger absolute value. So I would love to know tomorrow if you like the idea of thinking about money, if that helps you as much as it does me. I'm going to leave these other two columns for you to attempt on your own. The best angle to approach any problem is the triangle. So please try these next two rows of problems on your own. You can pause here. I'm going to flip over to the back, so when you come back, I'll be working. Alright, on the back it says, add more than two integers. Two numbers with the same absolute value, but different signs. In other words, they're the same distance from zero, but they have opposite signs. They are called opposites. An integer and its opposite are called additive inverses. Now my screen ran off, but they are additive inverses. Here's that word, inverses of each other. And this property is useful when you're adding more than two integers, two or more integers. And it won't let me keep it, so highlight that word additive inverses. So go over there and get additive off of your paper. Here's what an additive inverse property looks like. The additive inverse property says positive 5 plus negative 5 equals 0. How is this going to come in handy? Well, when you tackle a problem that has more than two integers, Hey, negative 7 and positive 7 are opposites. So let's use the good old commutative property to rearrange this problem. The commutative property of addition, we'll abbreviate. This negative 7 plus 7 equals 0, and that's the new property we just are discussing called the additive inverse property. And you can abbreviate inverse I and V from now on. The additive inverse property gave us zero. And then additive identity, when I say show me your ID, negative 16. Well, if you add it to zero, you're going to get negative 16. So that's additive identity. All right, now I just wanted you to show we are using all of these properties we've learned in class so far. Let's look at example B. Sometimes we do these properties, we don't even realize we're doing them. The first thing I see that I want to do is get my positives together and my negatives together. <clears throat> so let's rearrange the negative 4 and the 9. Again, the commutative property allows me to say 9 plus negative 4 plus negative 7. Commutative property of addition. Yes, I'm adding, even though there's negatives there, I'm adding negatives. All right. Now we can uh, use the associative property. Let's associate 12 with 9 and negative 4 with negative 7. So the associative property allows me to group this way. And 12 plus 9 is 21 plus a negative negative. Now remember, I add 4 and 7 is 11. And I'm going to keep the negative because they were both negative. And now I'm ready to simplify. So I did sort of skip a step, but I, I said it, I just didn't rewrite it. I associated 12 with 9 and negative 4 with negative 7. I'm sorry I made that negative so messy. There, I can clean it up. All right, so opposite signs. What do I do, class? You subtract and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. 
So when I subtract 21 minus 11, I get 10. And 21 is a greater absolute value, so my final answer is 10. I'm already 10 minutes into this video, so I'm going to just pick a couple of these to work with you. Number four doesn't look too terribly bad because we already have the two negatives together. So the associative property, I'm going to take care of my negatives. So I copy seven and I'm going to associate negative five with negative six. They're the same sign. So I add uh, five and six, give me 11 and I keep the negative because they were the same sign. Now I have opposite signs. So I have to subtract seven from 11 is going to give me four and I'm going to keep it negative because 11 is greater than seven. So it's a negative four as my final answer. Let's jump down to 14. What do I do when there's four of them? That's when we want to rearrange. Let's put negative 18 plus a negative seven plus nine plus 18. Use the commutative property with these two numbers and then we're going to associate negative 18 and negative 7, 9 and 18. So that, all right, so negative, negative, I'm adding 18 and 7, and that's going to give me 25. They were both negative, so it's a negative 25 plus 9 and 18 is going to give me 27. So now I have opposite signs, so I have to subtract and keep the sign of 27. So it's going to be a positive two. Now you see this is hard to show work here, so I'm going to show you 18 the way I want to see it, but you need to finish this assignment on a separate sheet of paper. I'll be looking and I'll know who watched the video and who just went through and tried to work these problems. So on separate paper I want you to do all of the rest of these problems. So yes, tonight's uh, personal practice is going to take a little bit longer than normal. All right, so again, I'm going to rearrange using the commutative property. Then I'm going to associate, and then I'm going to add 12, uh, 16 and 21, negative 12 and negative 25, so that's going to give me a negative 37. Now I'm going to subtract, oh, 37 plus a negative 37? That is additive inverse. Additive inverse says that equals zero. All right, don't be a zero. Please do your homework. Have a great day.